I recently found a suspicious looking sample of alien goo, so today I'm making a venom mask. For this build, I used craft foam, floor mat foam, half cylinder foam, clay foam, coffee foam, putty, super glue, hot glue, contact cement, wooden rakes, snakes, snakes, I meant snakes, slender man's face, black paint, sanding tools, safety gear, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. I started by tracing one of my generic night helmet templates onto a sheet of EVA foam. I basically just need the bulbous shape of the back of the helmet, which I'll then flip around to turn into the front of a venom mask, similar to what I did while making the Daft Punk visor. Template links are below. Those links will look exactly like Venom, so you guys don't have to go through all the trial and error of reversing a night helmet like I am. I'm using a white paint marker for the trace lines because it shows up better on camera, and also in real life, which is important because those registration marks can be hard to see. So, I don't know, just press harder with a Sharpie, I guess. I cut out the shapes with scissors for the unimportant edges, which are either going to be sanded away or covered up, but the edges that need to fit together I need to cut with razor pens, which I periodically sharpen to keep a clean cut. By the way, I'm sorry you have to look at my ridiculous quarantine hair for these shots. I promise I'll take care of it. I did! I cut a dart out of the side panels to help get that curved shape. Once those were cut out, I had to refine them even more. If you can make it out, despite my best efforts, this came across not quite totally curved. There's a little bit of deviation and you can clean that up with the rotary tool. But for this, I'm gonna go with the belt sander. Once the pieces were sanded, I heat formed them with my heat gun and then manipulated them into a curved shape. Now they're ready to be glued together. For that, I'm using contact cement because it's strong and flexible. However, it's not great to inhale, so I'm wearing a paint respirator mask while I do this, which makes me sound like a robot. That's why there's no in-cam audio for this shot. Also lawnmowers. So many lawnmowers. That took a very long time, so I'm gonna let those get tacky before I start on the next scene because I'm definitely going to lose my place. After application, you have to give the glue roughly 12 minutes or until it becomes tacky before you can stick the pieces together. Too soon and the seams won't hold, too late and the seams won't connect. Although the temperature and humidity turn the whole thing into a giant guessing game. Come on, make it! You're almost there! Uh, yeah, look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Mm -hmm. See, now that's a seam. Also a fender. So good. And by now... After the pieces were connected, I let them sit overnight to air out. I try to time these builds so that the waiting period overlaps with my sleep schedule. With varying success, then I cut away the base of the helmet so that it would rest on a slant. To give them a bit more of an upper lip, I made strips out of a failed helmet dome simply because it already has a curved shape and I didn't want to waste a fresh sheet of foam. Then I attached it with super glue. You don't want to use super glue for the entire helmet because it could crack over time on seams that flex, hence the contact cement. It starts supposed to come to more of a triangle and then meet up with the eyebrows. So I'm going to expand that with more scrap craft foam. This is gonna look totally ridiculous until it's done. I sketched a rough shape for the eyes. Looks like dark winged duck. Then I cut the jawline to form a more sinister smile. I also cut the eye holes. Next, I made the jaw out of a piece of scrap floor mat foam that was conveniently crescent shaped. I don't know what that's from. I had to sand that to be rounded because it's a lip. Then I heat formed it and attached it with super glue. You'll notice that as I'm working, I'm continually refining the upper lip until it resembles something a, a little more like a sinister symbiote and less like a cartoon duck bill. There's a lot of trial and error in this process if you're doing this from scratch, but since since I'm gonna pull templates from this later, you know, anyone who uses those is gonna have a much easier time with it. To get the upper lip to be rounded, I could sand it, but that becomes problematic in the corners. So instead, I glued on a strip of half dowel EVA foam, and for once, spared myself a ton of sanding. Occasionally, I save myself some trouble. I also glued some of the excess on the back there, not so much as a detail, but rather to take up some volume, because I'm about to use a whole bunch of foam clay, and I don't wanna waste it's it. It's a good product. Next, I filled in the seams with Alex Fast Dry. It's a flexible filler that I've gravitated towards because it has the fastest dry time of any flexible filler that I've used, and I've used like three. I rounded the eyes with my rotary tool. Then I even further refined the upper lip. Wow, that's already a thousand times better. That was like no effort too. For the more organic veiny details, I'm using foam clay. This was uh, given me by Skyler Osler. Don't wanna touch that. It's important to keep this from drying out. It's been sitting for like a year. I don't think that's bald. 
Depending on his state of transformation, Venom is like veins and stuff. Goes from being veins to sort of liquidy smooth. So I'm, I'm trying to split the difference because if I commit to veins, then the entire thing has to be veins, which is overkill for one. And plus that's really more of a carnage kind of look. Although I think carnage is gonna be the next new villain, right? Uh, I don't even really remember the the difference between Venom and Carnage has been years since I read those comics. I think I read those comics before YouTube even existed. So that's just to disguise some of the rougher shapes and edges. This stuff shrinks over time. So I'm, I'm trying to put it on here a bit larger than I want the end product to be because I know it's gonna shrink. There's that little, little piece that I threw in here. I'll take a little one. So the water is kind of like a mild adhesive. Just gotta damp the thing down, and that'll sort of glue it to the surface. It's not a precise science, or if it is, I haven't figured it out yet. So if it does come up after it dries, you can just super glue it back down, but that's how you make little veins. I start off by covering that really obvious area behind the jaw, then I widen the neck hole, just because this is the first that I'm noticing it. This is just to make it easier to wear. Next, I made stringy, veiny strands to connect the jaw to the face, crisscrossing them as I moved outward from the corner of the smile. To get the smaller veins branching off, I stretched the foam after rolling it. Ah, my band-aid came up. I really hope that's not black mold. And that's how he got infected. Like that's the beginning of a Venom movie right there. Or yet another Alien prequel. Let's see how many Black Slime sci-fi references I can make here. Oh no, run Denise Crosby! You'll have to play a Romulan! Now, this is on the very back. It's not really meant to, well by definition, it's not meant to be front and center. But I'm doing this just so that if it's caught on an angle, you don't see that hard edge. You know, why am I asking? I can't hear you. I wish I had this stuff when I was making the Xenomorph costume. It's a lot more convenient to make organic shapes than hot Hot glue is, but it does take three days for all the water to totally evaporate. I was able to bring that down to one day by putting it in a hot attic. Yeah, it's hot enough. After it had dried, I painted it black. This took several layers, you know, once I could get the can open. Not today! I should just start off in bandages, or I, I should build prop making armor, specifically to prevent prop making wounds. Oh, that would have to be out of metal. You know. Next, I gave it a base coat of gloss black, and then... All right, I let this dry overnight. So I added some asymmetry right here because, you know, he's a goo monster. But it kind of looks like he's given like a Spock eyebrow. So I'm gonna even that out a bit with hot glue because it dries so much faster. And then I'm gonna do two more layers so that I can get the rough patches to match the smooth ones in terms of glossicity. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Now that it's all one solid color, I'm noticing areas like right here and here are a little lacking in small veins. Like they should be really thick in recently formed areas, recently formed opening joint areas, and then gradually smooth out to smooth. Since I'm doing this after the fact, I'm gonna be drawing those veins in with hot glue. So the stringing effect of hot glue is generally a nuisance for prop makers. It's gotta be removed, otherwise it's gonna get into the paint brushes and create unpredictable patterns. All right, moving on. When the black paint had dried, I made the teeth. I did this out of scrap craft foam of various sizes left over from the Stormtrooper helmet build. Or was it the Among Us imposter? I think it was the Among Us imposter. Yeah, it's probably both. Starting with thick floor mat foam and then gradually scaling down in length and thickness to four millimeter craft foam and then two millimeter craft foam as I moved to the corners from the center of the mouth. Oh wait, actually reverse that. I started with corners and then moved up as I went to the middle. You can't just do another take, you know. Never! William Shakespeare does one take. This is what it looks like. Uh, there we go. That looks like on the inside. And I'm actually putting some angled outwards on the outside there. Because when he morphs into a mouth, when he generates the teeth, they sort of fold in from outward. But also, I'm trying to hide some really obvious angles that if you did get up close, you could see. Here's the other side. I really like how it's coming together on that side. All right, so for this part, I have to use the thicker foam. I cut a notch in the front teeth so that they'd fit on that ledge. When those were glued in, it was technically done enough, but I added an extra row behind it to simulate the multi-row shark teeth look. And I think that looks way better. But in order to get the jaw to look right once it's on the wearer, 
gonna fold in a little bit, which will unfortunately make it impossible for me to get my head into it. So I'm gonna solve that problem by adding a strap. I glued in the strap. For the tongue, I'm gonna use a wooden snake. For a little more added realism, I painted it red with red flex bond, which should keep the paint from cracking along the flexible spine of the snake, you know, if I had used just regular spray paint. To make the eyes, I wore a white ski mask under the venom mask. To prevent the white from being visible in the open mouth, I wore a black face mask on top of the ski mask, but underneath the venom exterior. Alternatively, you could do a red mask or even just cut out a mouth hole in the white ski mask because depending on how the venom symbiote is depicted, sometimes you can see Eddie's face through venom's open mouth. I added the tongue and I was done. And it's all thanks to my patrons who make these videos possible. If you're interested in joining them and supporting the channel, you can check out the links in the description description down below. Anything pledged goes towards improving video quality, shop equipment, and allows me to put together bigger and more exciting projects for you to enjoy. Be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified of future builds, and in the meantime, you can check out some of my past builds right here. Thanks for joining me on this build. What's your favorite Marvel character? Let me know in comments below. Alright, happy crafting. See you later.